Today, this is not my prime subject for today. If you've seen in one of the last videos, I just received this from True Tech Tools. I ordered it. Uh, today, we're going to be going over uh, my second SM480V field piece digital manifold. This will be later, but I was you since this is new, I'm breaking it in and I'm seeing how it operates before I bring it out in the field. I brought it out once yesterday to use on one job. Um, that was it. Other than that, the only thing I've been using this for is conditioning and you could say commissioning this in to see if it's up to my standards qualified to actually go out on a job. Just because it's a Testo, a Field Piece, a Robin Air, or any brand that's really good doesn't mean it's always ready to go out in the field to be used. So let's start it up. Okay, so I'll tell you since it takes too long to do everything, takes hours to do. My first way of seeing if, if a system is qualified to go out on a job, first I want to see if it could take vacuum and then pressure. Right now I'm under the first uh, deep vacuum method to see to make sure that when I wiggle the valves you move them a little bit all of a sudden you don't see the micron levels purge up they start going up you start losing vacuum you move your dot you move your gauges a little bit and you start seeing that start to leak through the valving uh, most I could say almost all of my gauges that I've bought usually fail this the first time right out of the box and I have to take them apart and then I'll use silicone grease like you see here and I'll take the o-rings out and I'll use silicone grease inside the valving and then it'll pass the vacuum test after that so here's the story the vacuum pump was running last night when I came home you could see I have caps on the end here in case it leaked by here I had the valves all the way open as if they were going to hoses and I was actually vacuuming out even the tubes and everything like that to make sure there was no leaks anywhere. And I came home and it was on the vacuum pump for about three hours and it was able to get down to roughly 140 microns of vacuum. Uh, right now you see it sitting at 87 because this was running all night. Uh, this was a new hose. I didn't use my blue hose, the silicone uh, vacuum rated hose. This was an old one I had in stock. I, this has to be over a decade old. It's brand new, never used. I have a whole bunch of these old 3 8 refrigerant hoses I used to use for charging and vacuuming. Uh, this is going back over a decade, way before the big blue hoses were ever invented or marketed or the AccuTwos or any of the other ones. I was using these decades before they even were even a dream in their father's sperm in his balls. Um, so that was all old school stuff. And that's how actually how old this old vacuum hose is. Uh, I have even older ones. I have ones that are brand new, big 60 inches that are almost 30 years old. Um, so here we go. We're at 87. So here's the story. Three hours on vacuum, got it down to roughly 160, 140 microns. I turned off the vacuum pump and it rose all the way up to 1900 microns. I checked the valves, I moved them in, I moved them out. There was no rise, it was staying steady at 1900 uh, microns. And that was with this hose shut off. So it wasn't reading moisture boiling out of this hose. It was reading just what was with inside the valves, the everything inside the manifold only. So before I went to bed last night, it was about midnight, I turned the vacuum pump on again and just let it run all night. And when I came uh, this morning, I think it was like 60 some microns. And um, I turned it off. And as you can see, it's a couple hours later after being at 60 some microns, we've raised to 87 microns. Then I proceeded to play with the valving and started opening and closing. Now you see that little jump right there? Okay, that was, let's see, let's get this one. 
up in this one got a little bit more of a jump I first performed this with the valves all the way open or almost all the way open and proceeded with this test it passed and then I performed this test with the valves closed because I want to see if there's anything this would be considered somewhat of a pass it didn't go above 500 or so I'm pretty convinced that I am good through the valves and uh, I am also good through where the brass meets the, the body we're pretty good to go a neat little feature about this vacuum pump on this Navac vacuum pump it actually when it, uh, you read in instructions and I heard this last night because it was running in here um, when it reaches 500 microns and after it reaches 500 microns a timer is set and when it runs for 30 minutes below 500 microns you'll hear a beeper go off and a little alarm like your watch goes off telling you it has achieved 500 microns for 30 minutes and then the pump goes into a lower running mode it's no longer screaming balls to the walls you actually can hear because this is a DC motor and so it ramps down the motor and the motor will go at a lower RPM. So that's a great visual and audio feature to let you know because reaching 500 microns means absolutely nothing. As soon as you reach 500 microns, that is just when you started to do work. Nothing's really being achieved too much before that. It'd be nice if they had a second setting where you could go down to like 200 microns or below for a half hour and then shut off. But 500 will have to be good enough. It's good. Um, so that's a nice feature. It lets you know that you can keep this pump on. It could take you 1 hour, 30 minutes, or it could take you 10 hours before you reach 500 microns. But no work was really done until you hit that 500 microns. And then you kept on pulling after that. And that had to be performed twice on this one. And actually, I let the pump run all night to get to this point. So this only means my gauges are good. Now, it's time to commission in some new hoses. So I have some just betters here. I got some uh, Robin, not Robin, and yellow, yellow jacket hoses here. So now I'll stick the hoses on here. And I'll plug up the ends. And I'll just commission into hose, making sure the hose and drying them off. And it'll spend another overnight because it'll probably take that long to dry. Those are fresh hoses. So the hoses are actually, the material inside the hoses are latent with oil. So anytime you have hoses that are just saturated, uh, not oil, sorry, these are brand new, moisture. Uh, water is literally has absorbed into the rubber material. So when you put them under a vacuum and you say you brought it right down to 500 microns, microns and you shut it off, you will instantly see your, your microns shoot right up. And it's not that it has a leak, uh, essentially. It's all the water that is boiling out of your brand new hoses. So there is no way, and you're not supposed to use, for doing deep vacuum and anything, you're not supposed to use a manifold anyway. And you're not using, uh, you're not supposed to use hoses like this. But in the automotive field, face it, let's face it, this is reality. Automotive guys are not going to spend the money to buy all the equipment and rights up. They're just, let's say, not up to it. I'm going to be real friendly there and real polite about saying not the real thing. Um, a guy could usually only afford, say, a set of gauges, get a good set of gauges. A set of hoses, get a good set of hoses. Don't buy Harbor Freight, eBay, Amazon, cheap Chinese hoses. They are horrible. They can't hold a good vacuum. They don't last long. They can't hold high pressure nitrogen decay test. I did a video on that before. If you go back and look at some of my videos where I got some cheap manifolds and uh, cheap hoses, they always fail. They're just horrible, horrible stuff. That's all I got to say. All that stuff is garbage. And actually, there's automotive shops that use that on customers' cars to service their AC. If you just want to get cold to come out of the dash, steal some money, I mean, collect some money from your customer and see his taillights leave, then go ahead and go get the Harbor Freight, Amazon, or eBay hoses. That'll be fine. 
Uh, if this is your profession, your trade, and you want to do good work for your employees, for yourself, for your shop's reputation, and for your customer, get a good set of gauges. Get a good vacuum pump. It doesn't have to be this vacuum pump. I just, this is um, my second Navac vacuum pump. I mean, I was a Robin Air and Yellow Jacket guy for decades, ever since I was a kid working with my dad. Um, my dad's very first pump, I believe it was a little Robin Air. He had two little tiny Robin Airs, a little, um, one was like a refrigerator motor one, and that was all the way back in the 60s, late 60s or 70s, and then he had one of those, like, little Robin Air 1.5 CFM with an external motor that kind of looked like this. That had the electric motor and then it had the pump over here connected by a shaft uh, all the old guys will remember those uh, that's what I learned on um, and my dad showed me a thing where you take two vacuum pumps and you would hook two vacuum pumps together now this is what he did when he was shown by the older refrigerator guys taking the exhaust of one vacuum pump and putting it into an intake of another vacuum pump to get a deeper vacuum that was an old trick from back in, I guess, before the 60s, 50s, 60s, whatever. Um, so that was the way I was raised on stuff that wasn't fancy like this. But I was always raised with a micron gauge. We had an uh, analog micron gauge that took like six or eight D batteries in it and had a huge sensor. It was temperature sensitive and uh and the batteries only lasted several hours and it was very touchy you guys are so lucky to have the micron gauges you have now so my next step will be taking and let's see here here comes the noise and this has micron uh reading right in it too and uh, this unit is capable of going down to 15 microns that is what they're spec'd out at I do get it read lower though, uh, very unusual. I almost don't believe it, it goes so low. Only my big 12 CFM $2,000 plus unit gets down to this level. Um, but as you're gonna notice, let's tr open this up. What this reads and what this reads are two different beasts. Because of all the loss from wherever this sensor is located in here, then you have the losses going through your fitting. You have the friction loss and the losses of the rubber hose. And then everything, as far as you get farther, this will be higher. And so if I put a rubber hose on here and I put a micron gauge here, the number will be higher at the end of this hose coming down this little line going up here. And then as you connect it up to your air conditioning system and you go to your furthest point, your evaporator or condenser, the micron will even be reading will be lower so this is the first step of me commissioning in a set of gauges before they ever hit the field uh, then there'll be a nitrogen pressure decay test and I'll hold it overnight and uh, actually not on my big units I use copper lines I don't use gauges and uh, there is no rubber in my system when I do a pressure decay test. It's all using soft copper as hoses onto a pressure. And actually, I like my, my Testo 557 as my nitrogen pressure decay test tester when I do 24-hour nitrogen pressure decay tests. Um, that is my to-go thing with soft copper lines with no rubber gaskets. So that's it on today for commissioning it in the next time i'll make another little video and i'll show you what it looks like being overnight with a set of hoses connected up draw it on a vacuum and show you how much vacuum how much microns it loses just by hooking up a set of hoses and then tapping them off turning off the vacuum pump killing the vacuum source at the valve and watch the level rise now, if your level rises too much, and if you were commissioning a real system outside, how can you possibly say that when you let the vacuum sit and stand, it was under 500 microns? Once you have used old hoses and they're saturated with ester oil inside and it has moisture inside, there's no way you can pull. There is a way. It takes a really long time. Using rubber hoses and pulling a vacuum, turning it off, 
letting the vacuum decay will go over 500 uh, microns. That's where you need the silicone hoses or hard metal lines, soft copper lines as your hose with no rubber gaskets. All right, guys, I will see you. Navac 8CFM, this is their DI model, just in case you want to know. All right, where's their model number? NRP HDI, that's this model right here. And these are the field piece uh, S Man SM 480V. You've seen uh, the exact same gauges, but a lot beat more beat up, dirtier and uglier looking that I've been using in a lot of my videos in the last uh, several months. And uh, these will be the next pair that are coming in. See you guys.